Hello everyone! In this video, I'll show you how I made this character using my own Blender add-on. This add-on simplifies the process of using action constraints, and here's how to use it. We have a rigged character with some animated head turns. We then add a control bone. Then in the end panel under the new smartphone tab, we select the armature that holds the control bone. We select the control bone, which direction it should move in order to drive the action and how far. Finally, we choose the actions and frame range before pressing the add smartphone button. And boom, the action is now controlled by our bone. So that's the basics. Now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty with some more advanced techniques and a more in-depth look into how this all works. Before we dive into how this add-on can make rigging in Blender easier, let me explain the problem I was trying to solve. Most 2D cutout animation software, such as Toon Boom Harmony or Moho, have some 2D specific rigging features that allow you to emulate 3D for head turns and the like. Blender, on the other hand, being primarily a 3D software, has none of these features built in. So emulating this workflow in Blender can be difficult and time consuming. The closest alternative in Blender is using action constraints, which have to be applied to individual bones in the action one by one. This can take a while and requires careful attention to detail. So to address this issue, I decided to develop an add-on that automates the process. By using this, you can achieve a similar efficient workflow as you would with Moho's smart bones, but with Blender. Let me show you how it works. To use this add-on, you first need to have a rigged character and have animated head turns using the existing bones, each in their own action. If you need help getting to this point, I would highly recommend watching my head turn tutorial series. This would also be helpful to understand the manual process before using the automated one. We then add a few new bones to control the head turn. First, a root, something to move the entire mechanism around for the ease of use of the animator. Then the actual control bone, this one will drive the animations when it moves. Make sure that this is a child of the root bone. Finally, we add an intermediate bone, which will also be a child of the root bone. We then add a limit distance constraint to the control bone, targeting this intermediate bone. We then set the distance to something like one unit, or in my case, 0.6 units. This will depend on how far you want the control to be able to move. Now to enable the add-on, we open up Edit, Preferences, under Add-ons, and press the Install button. We find the file and make sure that it's enabled. Once everything is set up, you can open the End panel and under the Smartphone tab, start filling in the details. You'll need to specify the armature object, the control bone for the head turn, you can also set the direction of movement, such as moving along the local X location, and the distance it should move. Finally, you'll need to specify the action and the frames over which the action should take place. Once you've filled in all the necessary details, all you need to do is press the Add Smart Bone button, and it will automatically loop through all the bones in the action and add an action constraint with the correct information. By using this add-on, you can save a significant amount of time that would have been spent manually adding action constraints to each bone in the action. This frees up more time for you to focus on the creative aspects of your animation. Plus, it helps you achieve the same efficient workflow that you would have had in Moho or other software. And with that, we are done. It's that simple. We can control our left, right, up and down actions with one bone. And of course, the actions can mix together, giving us in-between poses. However, depending on how complicated your character is, this mixing doesn't always look as good as it should. 
In the past, the process of setting up all the action constraints was so time consuming, there was no way I was going to spend more time adjusting these angles to look better. As far as I knew, it was just something I had to settle for. But because the smartphone add-on simplifies the process, I had time to think of solutions, and I did in fact find a way to drive a corrective action when the control bones move at an angle. Most of the time we really don't have to do this, and the mixed actions are close enough, but I'll show you how to do it if you're a perfectionist like me. First we need to understand the difference between global and local space. Global space and local space are two different coordinate systems used in 3D modeling. Global space is based on a fixed point, the world origin, and when an object moves along the x-axis, let's say, it moves in the same direction regardless of its rotation. Local space, on the other hand, is based on the object's transform, and when the object is moved along its local axis, it moves relative to its rotation. However, we have a third option, custom space. This is where we move one object based on the local coordinates of another object or bone. This can be applied to our character by first creating a new action and animating the control bone to move up and to the right, so that it moves as far as possible at a 45 degree angle. Now in the same action, we just adjust the final pose, making sure we set a keyframe for everything at the end of the action and a neutral pose at the beginning. Once we're happy with the new pose, we delete the keyframes of the control bone. Now we're just left with our correction. It looks a little odd on its own, but once it's tied with our existing control, it will fix the problem we were having before. Now in object mode, we can add a new empty object. I would also recommend naming it something relevant, making sure that it's at the same position as the control bone. And we should probably add a child of constraint, targeting the root bone of the control the one we use to move the control around. Finally, we make sure that we rotate it by 45 degrees. This will define the custom space to drive our corrective actions, the x-axis extending along here, and the y-axis like this. Now back in our rig, in pose mode, we use the add-on to select the armature and the control bone, we choose X location just as before, but this time we set the transform space to custom instead of local. Now, in the new parameter that pops up, we select the new empty object. We then set the distance to be the same as for the other actions, I'm using 0.6. And finally, we choose the corrective action and the frame range, and we press the add smartphone button. There we go. Now, when we move right and up, the rig blends between the right and up actions, but then on top of that, it also blends in the corrective action, fixing any issues we had. Now, we just repeat the same process for the other three directions. For the up and to the left, we use the empty's y-axis. For the down and to the left, we use the x-axis again, but set the transform range to negative 0.6 so that it works in the opposite direction. Finally, for down and to the right, we use the y-axis and negative 0.6 transform range. With all that done, we are finished. For this character, it's a pretty subtle effect and perhaps not worth the effort. However, for more complicated characters, the issues that come from mixing actions are much more pronounced. And it's nice to know that there is a solution. Hopefully this video has been helpful. You can find links to the add-on and this Blender file in the description, as well as this bonus character. Let me know how you choose to use it, whether for grease pencil like this, or for your 3D projects. Thank you for watching and I'll see you around.